when you think about um, how life is changing and what the changes could be, what lasting changes could be there in terms of work, home, and play. I mean, let's start with work because you and I were just chatting that, you know, um, how we work, obviously, the time we spend working is changing right now. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's a great point, Kim. Uh, before work from home, right now, for example, you and I are having this conversation uh, in, you know, both remotely and it's seamless. It's as if we're doing it in the studio. So we are working, but imagine, but now working from home has become socialized. We've been doing it for three months. And the easiest way I can tell you this is that, Kim, imagine I gave you four extra days of vacation a year. And you'd say, Damien, how's that? What do you mean? That's what I just mean. And even if we start, if we, even if we go back to work, if we start, you know, spending some of that work time working from home, for example, in, 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 in Canada, the average commuting time is 26 minutes. If I do that twice a day and I add in lunch, even if I work from home for 20% of the time I did, that's equivalent to four extra days of vacation. The, you know, four extra time, days of vacation that you could spend with family or, you know, on recreational activities or, you know, even just, I guess, reading a book or something much more subtle. And I guess all that requires technology and infrastructure. So that's oh. going to drive uh, demand on that front. Oh, completely. And, and look, I, I, I was talking from the social aspect of, of working from home. From the investment aspect, this is op- this has just accelerated spending on, you know, on a few companies. Imagine this. If you were a company before and you were deferring investments in cloud applications or security or, allowing in, or enabling employees to work from home, this has just brought that and accelerated that spend. Right now, you know, if, you have the, if you're a cloud provider, whether you're Microsoft or Amazon, you're seeing significant demand as corporates are looking to, you know, provide data and access to their employees from remote environments. This is, you, you've pulled forward a lot of this demand. So whether, and it's even something as simple as you and I right now are using our devices to communicate. That is introducing, you know, wear and tear in our devices. You could see a replacement cycle for Apple take place here too. And so, you know, I'm very positive about both technology and the software that enables work from home uh, uh, to facilitate and from the hardware aspect, because, uh, you know, I I see all this demand continuing. So, Damien, that's the investment implication for uh, work and and working from home. What about um, how we spend? Because, uh, you know, for those that haven't lost jobs, um, you know, there's a lot of pent up spending because we're not going out and spending all the time. Sure. I I think, look... uh, you know, every recession exacerbates certain trends. So e-commerce was in play before this. Uh, you've just seen acceleration in e-commerce sales, but something more subtle has taken place too, right? We're spending more time at homes. Our homes are becoming our castles. They're protecting us from the virus. We're spending more time in them. So we are, you know, naturally going to look to improve them, whether that, whether that be, you know, uh, making home improvements or something like Home Depot, those lineups that, you know, we see on our, our social media, people lining up at Home Depot, that's real demand. And it's real demand not because of people fixing up their homes, because they want to improve their surroundings because they're spending so much more time in it. Something as simple as painting your walls to, you know, to provide more uh, ambiance in your house because you're spending more time. A Sherwin Williams that operates in an oligopoly for paint benefits. So you know, I, I think what, you, what you're going to see is that a lot of those consumption dollars that we spent on uh, you know travel on experiences are going to move towards spending on home on on home more than home improvement, but just home goods to improve you know our, our surroundings in this place we're spending most of our time in right now. What's the investment thesis for healthcare services? I know I've done a ton of uh, doctor phone calls, and I know that's been changing too. What do you see there? Well, I, I think that telehealth has has telehealth in general has a lot, uh, in, you know, a lot going for it right now. Just because uh, we do know that it's always been there. You know, companies that, for example, Teladoc in the U.S. that offer you uh, the ability to speak to a nurse or speak to a doctor on the phone. But a few things are coming together right now. For example, most most people, most patients, potential patients, don't want to, uh, you know, walk into the doctor's office uh, or can't. So, and they're being enabled by technology. So even diagnostics are more, if you have video cameras or if you have the ability to do so, you can actually, you know, not, you can actually speak to a doctor virtually and actually have a much better uh, or, or a seamless diagnostic experience or speak to a nurse on the phone to, you know, to walk you through it. I think, the, the, like I said, I think the virus probably, uh, you know, there is some real challenges, but certain industry groups, the demand function has actually been uh, pulled forward because, you know, we've just become more familiar with it and it makes sense. 
I, I only got about uh, 20 seconds, Damien, this last one. But on the one hand, when you look in the future, the markets have really rallied. We've seen a lot of money come into the markets. On the other hand, we're still waiting for the second, third wave of coronavirus and job losses to happen. So which one? Which look, uh, I I think uh, Kim, I've you know we've 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 spoken before. I can't tell you where markets are going to be, you know, the next six months. But I can tell you this, uh, you know, we talked about the good jobs number. There's still a 13% unemployment rate. What that means is that you know the central bankers are because unemployment is going to be higher for longer. Rates are going to be lower for longer. We've talked about you know uh, you know lower for longer. Think about rates being you know significantly lower for much more. I guess, drawn out period of time, which means the alternative, you know, companies that uh, can generate, you know, higher levels of cash flow that use those cash flows to pay for dividends, uh, you know, two, three years from now, as those companies see, as things have returned back to normal and they see, they've seen, you know, their cash flow levels return back to normal and they're still paying you dividends and buying back shares. I think those stocks, you know, the, the ones we've talked about are in the, in earlier on this segment, they, I think they're still going higher or they're biased to higher because, the alternative is rates that are still really low. Damien, thank you. Welcome.